Tony Harvey here for HRV TV. Welcome to the third edition and a brand new interview today. Um, this guy has been around the sport for a long time, hasn't been in the sport for probably the last couple of years. So um, I thought it'd be time to get hold of Brian Kirkham and have a bit of a chat to him. Former national elite champion, uh, Olympian, also lived in America for a little while, raced for uh, Intense, and uh, mate, he's done it all, and um, yeah, he's the man we need to speak to today. So uh, I'm going to give him a buzz now, and let's have a chat to Brian Kirkham. So HRV TV brought to you by HRV Fitness and BMX Coach. Uh, if you haven't gone to BMX Coach yet, I don't know what the hell you're doing. It, you obviously, you don't like winning races or whatever the hell it is, so get on a BMX Coach. BMX Coach, there's a subscription, there's... Um, there's a, an app, there's, there's apps on iPhone, there's apps on Android, there's apps everywhere. So get on the apps, or get on the subscription. Subscription's only $13.95 a month, that's cheap, so cheap. You get, you get training programs, sprint programs, you get them all. So um, check it out, BMX Coach, it's amazing. You'll go so fast, you won't believe yourself. So let's have a chat to Brian Kirkham and see what he's got to say. Here we are, guys, with the man himself, Brian Kirkham. How are you? Good, mate. Self. Yeah, good, man. Um, like I said with uh, with the last one, I'll, I'll have to do a bit of an intro. You've been out of the sport for about half a, half an hour, so everyone's forgotten who you are. So let's go down. Just go down the the run sheet. Brian Kirkham. So we've got former uh, elite national champion. What year did you win the nationals? Uh, Twenty twelve. Yeah, and where was that at? Mount Gambia. Mount Gambia. Nice. Bit of home track advantage down that way, down South Australia. Uh, that's closer to Melbourne, actually. It was four hours from your place. It's home track advantage. Uh, that's closer to you, mate. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's about halfway. It takes me about just as long to get to bloody Mount Gambia as it does for you guys. It's, 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 it depends on how fast you drive. Four and a half hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how um, how long were you in the sport for? You raced for a bunch of, bunch of years. Yeah, a long time. Yep. Um, started when I was five. Yep. Racing amateur stuff. And then, you know, I did all Nationals and World Championships, and then um, man, I turned I turned pro, started racing double A about sixteen. Yep. But didn't really take it too serious, to be honest, until until after junior elite, really. And then I had a couple of big injuries during my uh, junior elite days. Yep. And had a, had a full year off. Yep. Came back just refreshed and started training properly. Was I it guess. wrists? Wrists? You had problems with your yeah. wrists? Do you drink a lot of milk? Hey? Drink milk? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> milk I do each night, man. <laughs> um, so, elite champion, you um, you got a couple of world plates as well, made the final in the elite class a couple of times at the Worlds. Yeah, yeah, what was that, 2011? Yeah, five world? Yeah, so that was a good year. Awesome. And also went to the Olympics, so you were the second bunch to go to the Olympics? And um, got to represent your country at the Olympics, man. So, in your so, how many years is that around that you raced? What twenty years? Twenty five. Yeah, well, I was twenty seven when I stopped. So I started with five twenty two years. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So pro for about ten to eleven. Yeah, really. yeah. Lived in the states, rode for intense for a few years. Yeah, back, yeah, back and forth. Um, I guess it all it all kind of started two thousand eight really my international career I guess had a pretty rough year and you know I had a lot of injuries man each year yep. it was 2008 got injured I was completely over it I just wanted to quit um, after nationals yep. so I thought you know, I wasn't training wasn't doing anything yep um, Sam Sam Willoughby went and raced worlds came back and we're riding at the track one day and he said hey man you should come out and race grands with me in the year yep so I thought Shoot. I've been racing this long and I've got to do grants before I retire. Yep. So I started training from that point. Went over, spent a month over there just living, living the dream, you know, racing, training full time. Yep. Ended up making uh, both mains, the ROC and the Grands Main. Yep. And then that kind of kicked off my international career, man. Yeah. So I went from near on quitting to, to getting a decent result and back and you know, pushing for the Australian team again. It's funny, isn't it? It's a bit of a um, it's a bit of a pattern, you know. Guys go to America and just fall in love with the sport again. Yeah, that's right. Because I'd never had the opportunity to do it full time. 
Yep. Yeah, and, and I improved so much in that one month that I had just training, training flat out, riding with all those guys out there. That when I was out there was when uh, Orange Y was massive, and you go out there and there's two racks of pros. So yep, it was it was a great experience and improved a lot. And then you know after that, Bootsy, Bootsy saw that I could had a bit of potential and that I was training hard, so he sort of started helping me out and worked my way onto the team. Another South Australian rider, mate. You um, the the South Australian guys are doing really well. Is it what's what's going on over there? Is it something in the water, or is it the amazing tracks down in South Australia? What is it? Yeah, I don't know, man. We had proper guys, didn't we? Yeah. We had you know myself, Sam, Anthony Dean, guys on Fenwick, and yep, Matt Willoughby, and yeah, we had a good group. So yeah, I think I think it all it all kind of stemmed from what Sam was doing. Yep. Sam Sam was training like he is. Old. Yep. And then we just kind of hooked into that, and then can't let the little kid beat you. Yeah, that's right, man. Like, <laughs> we kind of created the culture that that we needed to, to train hard with results. So yeah. yeah, we just all took from there. Yeah, that's cool. I think Queensland did that for a little while too. You know, there was that that era of uh, Michael Robinson and Kamikaze, and and even Wade was in there, and, yeah, and there was yeah. that era of. Um, Queensland guys, and then there was a bunch of New South Wales guys as well. You know, you had the Hawkins and Dwight's and Luke and all those guys. So it's funny how it shifts. And Victoria had, um, 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 <laughs> oh, they had me. There you go, they had me. That was it. Who <laughs> was down there with you? Who did you drive you? Uh, there was, well, it was funny, man. It was like when I turned pro, everyone quit. So we had like the old days, it was like, Dean Patch, and there was uh, Rawson, and then Phil Beresford. There was a bunch of those guys. And then pretty much when I turned 15, 16, 17, 18, they all just left. And then there was me and Danny Galea. I was thinking you taking them out. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what happened. I think it was just too cold in Victoria. Cold yeah. and miserable. Everyone's like, oh, I'm not racing this shit. I'm going home. So yeah. Yeah. it was tough, man. It was tough in Victoria to stay motivated because there just wasn't a lot going on. But, you know, we ended up just... Had to travel, you know. Same with you guys, probably. You just had to travel a lot and yeah. head up head up north and head up to Sydney and head up to Queensland. And, you know, I ended up moving up to Sydney for a little while just to just to race and train. So, yeah, yeah it's good fun. How yeah, good's no, BMX? No. Heaps of fun. How good's BMX? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so, hey, let's talk a little bit about the States. Um, I've touched on a little bit with a few of the other guys. Um, yeah. So, you rode in the States... So, how long were you there for um, until you decided to go back full-time? So, did you do a couple of trips over and then you decided, all right, I'm going to do this full-time or how did it all work? Uh, it, was kind of, it was kind of weird. My, my whole goal was the Olympics, you know? Yep. I got to, after grands, after, you know, I sort of made those mains and then I was working full-time as a tradesman. Yep. And then I was just asking my boss for more and more time off and he eventually said, look, no, I can't give it to you. Yep. So, I got to that crossroads where I was like, hey, man, I got one shot at this opportunity here so quit quit my job just to live the dream with no paycheck yeah which was pretty scary but um you know i got there and then started doing training with boots um focusing more on world cup stuff yep Um, boots boots was really helpful you know we had a world cup out there then he would try and arrange our tickets so we can go out there sort of a month before and get some ABA races and Try and get us over there as much as possible. Yeah. Um. And then that kind of happened for a couple of years, and then I think it was, you know, I, I, I was on kind of a just a product deal with, with Intense over there. Yep. Until to the point where Herman David Herman left the team, kind of opened up a spot. Yep. And then the team manager Michael at the time said, "Do you want to do you want a gig?" So. Yeah. He hooked me up with the ride for 2012, 2013. Yep. Contract. Yep. So up until then, I was just on the Australian, the uh, Cycling Australia paycheck, basically. Yeah, okay. And uh, living up race winnings. So, and this is the thing, man, and, and you hear this all the time, and, and coming from a, you know, there's probably a few Americans watching this, and there's obviously a bunch of Australians that are, they're at that point in their career, they're like, man, what do I do? Do I, do I go to America and race? Do I stay in Australia and race? And it's, you, like you said, you've come to a crossroads, and eventually you've got to make that decision, huh? Yeah, yeah, and it's tough, man. You don't know where you don't know where the money's going to come from. It's not steady income. 
Yep. It's it's seriously just results driven. Yep. So, you know, if you go over there and you make a mains, you win winning in Australia, you make a mains over there. Yep. Like that's what's that's what's paying you to, to eat each week. Yep. So how does it work over there? Do you do you normally get a salary? Like obviously you're referring tents, so they pay you a salary every month or something like that. Is that how it works? So just monthly salary, depending on what kind of gig you get. You sort of get a salary, and then you have to get to the races from that. Yep. So specifying your contract, you have to race X amount of ABA races per year. Yep. Um, or if you're lucky enough, you get salary plus expenses. Yeah. Okay. You know they'll, they'll pay for. Amount of races a year, which you know is the biggest cost. Yeah. Over there, so. And what? And so, what are sort of the, the salaries range from? Um, was it sort of like what, fifteen to, like what sort of prices do they start and finish at each? Do you reckon? Um, I don't know. It's just speculation. Yeah. So it depends. It depends who you are, what results you've got, what company you ride for. Yeah. But, um, it's not. It's not big dollar stuff, man. Like, yeah. So what, yeah, sort yeah. of 15 to 4, 4.5, 15 to 4,000, something around there? Yeah, so your salary pretty much covers your living expenses. Yeah, so you got to win some races, in other words. Basically, yeah. How does if co-sponsorship... You if you don't win some races, get some bonuses, get some prize money, you're in a really big hole. <laughs> well, what about coes and stuff like that? Is that mostly just products over there, co-sponsors? Like, you hear rumours, and, and this is going off pure ignorance because I've never been over there to race for longer than six weeks. Um... This is what I hear. This is what I see. So, like, when you win, your sponsors match what you win. And then and then I heard, um, oh, and then, like, co-sponsors, they'll just, like, give you a percentage. So, say, if you win this much money, your co-sponsors will chip in this much money. I think it used to be like that. Yeah? Not anymore, though. Yeah. The stories I've heard from back in, sort of, 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Is, yeah, you get money to run every single component, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the moment, you know, there's not that much money in the industry. Yeah. The bubble burst. Yeah, there's just how many high-end BMX bikes do you sell? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's not that many compared to your average run-of-the-mill mountain bikes and street bikes. Yeah. You know, where they're selling thousands of units, that's where the money comes from. Yeah. So you have to look, you have to look outside the industry. Yeah. You look at what Sam's done, he's gone very active and coke, so you yeah. have to outside the industry to make some good money. Well, your skin's pretty good, so... Yeah. It's no good. Like no. no good. No good. They come to me and I say, look, I've got perfect skin, bro. <laughs> Where I've got pimples, you can't see, so... Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so you touched on the on the national program. How um? So how did you find working with Booty and all that? You know, I, and this is just like speculation again. I've heard rumors about this, the national program and, you know, and you hear, you know, some of the other riders are pretty vocal about, oh, this, the program's this and that, but, you know, you had a good relationship with Bootsy and, and the national program, yeah? Oh, yeah, I definitely did, man. Bootsy kind of stuck his neck out for myself to get me on the team and give me as much support as he can and, um, you know, it definitely, it definitely paid off for, for myself, you know, I got, I got to a point in the sport where I never thought I would ever reach, you know, like living in the States, going to the Olympics. Previously before that, like I said, I only quit in 2008, so, yeah. um, you know, I was getting, getting results, so I'm, you know, very grateful for what he's done for myself. Yep. But it's one of those things, man, like it's so hard to, the previous Olympic cycle, I found it extremely difficult to try and get support and get help. Yep. Because you know, the, the coach at the time was focusing on a certain few riders, because there's only one person, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Chris is the same. He's like, oh, look, I can only look up this, this amount of riders. Yeah. To get cracked into it is, is extremely hard. So you have to kind of go do it off your own back. Yeah. But what they're trying to do is build a bit of a feeding kind of structure. You know, I think Luke's doing a bit of coaching with BMX Australia, so he can develop riders. And then feed them up to the national program. Yeah, I think it's a structure they're trying to build at the moment, which is is what we need. But it's just, you know, the sport's early, so it's yeah. just early at the moment. still a young sport, man. Like in, in comparison to all these other sports, and, and especially at, a, at an international level like the Olympics. What well, this is our third Olympics, you know, we're we're still sort of running around chasing our tails, trying to. Yeah, that's right. You know, like like you can't you can't write programs for every single 
person makes the elite main of Nashville, you know? Yeah. You can only fo- focus on a certain few riders. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a tough man. You're never going to please anybody. Yeah. And I think it's, it's definitely, once you get in there, it's great. Yep. Trying to break into it can be frustrating. And you know what the hardest thing too, man? It's an individual sport. So everyone's in competition with everyone and everyone's, you know, why is he getting this treatment and I'm not getting that treatment and all that and sort we, of stuff. we're better than everybody else, you know? Oh, yeah. We're like high-paid rock stars that don't really get paid money. Yeah, I was like, what are you looking after him for? I can smash him. Yeah, yeah. It's taking, you know, and then yeah. when it comes to show, you might not be as good as you actually think. So. Man, it's a, it's, a fi- it's a fickle little sport, you know? Yeah, I, mean, I remember saying to um, a couple of guys, you know, that I grew up racing against, imagine we put all this time and energy into another sport. You know, imagine we grew up playing tennis or, or something that made money, like, you'd kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but we yeah. found this sport that everyone loved to do, and just, it's a broke-ass sport. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, that's what I, was, I was thinking. I was quitting, quitting BMX, you know, coming back to the real world, I thought, man, if I put as much time and energy into making money as I do with BMX, I'll be a millionaire in no time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How's your golf game going? Horrible, man. <laughs> How hard is it? Oh, it's crap. I went out the other day, shot 112. <laughs> it's it's hard. I was the same. I'm, I'm gonna play golf, man. I'm gonna play golf. I bought some golf clubs, got shoes, got it fitted, yeah. got some lessons. I'm still shit at it. You can't be that hard to walk around a field and hit the ball. It's a it's a horrible sport. Yeah, it's so I, hard. I, I enjoy it, man. I really do enjoy it. But it's not. I'm not getting any better. I was going out. I was going out every day. Yeah. yeah, I'm still no good at it. Yeah, yeah, it's a horrible sport. No, it's all. It's like I said. It's good. It's good, but it's such. It's so hard. It's so hard to. I find it really hard to concentrate for 18 holes. I fall asleep. I'm like, dude, I'm I'm naked. I get to like 14 holes and I'm I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. They should do like a just. I play nine most of the time. I'll walk nine and that's it. I can't do it. <laughs> hey, I got a good story. So. I, um, I've been asking all these guys if they've got any good BMX stories, right? So I'll go first and then you can think of any decent BMX stories if you got any. Uh, you got any? Maybe. All right, I'll go first. So I'll tell you the story. And you probably don't remember this, but I remember this. So you came to, um, I think it was our, our state titles, was it? Uh, yeah. Remember that? No, you don't remember that. That's why this is funny. So I pick you up from the airport. We go to Shepherd and Fred <laughs> Nationals. <laughs> And um, and I didn't think you even raced, did you? It was only practice, wasn't it? Nah, first moto. Oh, it was the first moto. So, all right, you're looking strong and getting through the pros train. Said, Gee, Brian's looking good. And everyone's just going, oh, well, so Brian should win today. And then uh, who's going to get second? Who's going to get third? So first race, hits the um, hits the second pro straight at Shep and just like, I don't even know what you did. Just tank slap. And um, head bongo, so I go, oh, shit, so I picked him up, so he's staying with me, so I run over to the finish line and say, oh, here you going, mate? Oh, yeah, no, I don't feel real good. And so then we're sitting down, and they're like, oh, look, you better take him to the hospital. I'm like, oh, okay. And you just, I remember you looking at me going, I can't remember anything. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I can't remember anything. I go, okay. And he goes, we're in Shepparton, yeah? I go, yeah. He goes, I can't remember anything. I'm like... We'll go to the hospital now. That's cool. So <laughs> pulled the car around, chucked you in, and uh, you were all calm about it, which was which was hilarious. And then you just sitting there, just staring at me, going, "I can't remember anything." And so on the road trip to the um, to the hospital, which was like five minutes away, you start shit starts coming back, and you're looking at me, going, "Oh man, this really sucks." I said. So that's all right, man. You just hit your head. You said, you know, it'll come back. You probably just got a bit of swelling or something. Yeah, yeah. And then you start remembering shit and you're like, oh. So we're in Shepparton, and yeah? I go, yeah. He goes, yeah. So this is the, the the state titles, yeah? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Oh, I broke up with my missus, didn't I? I go, yeah. And you're like, oh, I just broke up with my missus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh, that was funny. But you got over it pretty quick, which was good. And then, I don't know, then he goes, oh, nuts. And then just all this other shit started flooding back. It was crazy. It's the funniest, the craziest thing I've ever seen. That, that was wild, man. I seriously knocked myself two months back in time. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild. <laughs> oh, shit. I was hoping you weren't going to say that story. Oh, that was awesome, though. That was the best story I've ever, I've ever got to tell anyone. Yeah. It was so, it was just real trippy. It was like, you know, someone was like sleepwalking and um, yeah. I was just doing all weird shit. I was, I was sitting there and I was two months 
back in time. I had no idea where I was or what I was doing. That's crazy. Yeah, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So what have you got? You got any decent BMX stories? Uh, not much, man. It, USA trips? Yeah, what? Well, one thing that comes to mind, man, is uh, in the uh, World Cup in Fréjus in France. Yep. It was, uh, we had nothing to do before practice. I just went south there today before, before the race, so we had nothing to do. Thought it would be a good idea to go high scooters. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, there was... Myself, Luke, Kalen, and Sam, all hired scooters, cruising around Frey Juice, just up in the ball. Girls went and hired scooters as well, and then just before we had to take them back, we thought we'd do a group ride and just shred them down. So we cruised along doing skits on the white paint. Yep. A big chirpy, and then just cruise off. <laughs> Remember, um, Sam was cruising along, did a big chirpy on the white paint, looking behind to see the skid mark. And then a hatchback in front of him just hit the brakes, and he was looking the opposite direction. Just yeah. the front of him. In the back of this thing, mate. <laughs> and I just got this image in my head of just Sam <coughs> in the back of this hatchback like this, <laughs> smashed the scooter up. Yep. And then he was just tripping the rest of the day, got a, sh- uh, a texture out, coloring all, all the chip marks and stuff like that. Oh, man, That's bad I, news, man. That was one of the BMXs on um on motorbikes or um go karts is just um bad news. Yeah, dude, it's so much fun though. <laughs> the good old days. Do you miss it though? Do you miss racing and hanging out with the guys? It's more the you know what I find. I miss just hanging out with the guys and just doing dumb shit like that. Yeah, definitely, man. That's what that's what I miss. I to be honest, man, I don't I don't miss training. Yep. Training racing because I know I know what's involved. Like I don't want to do it unless I'm going to win. Yeah. Yeah, but I know how much effort and time and effort's involved in, in getting to that point. I think Kamikaze is the same thing. Yeah, as well. So yeah. I don't miss that side of thing. I miss just hanging out at the track, just yeah. hanging out with fellas shooting shit. You know. Yeah. Oh, look, I found the goal. The fa- the secret is is to wait till you're a little bit older, and then by then all the fast guys have quit the sport. You come back and you've got more chance of winning by then with doing less effort. Wait until you're older. What race bet pro? Yeah. Like, wait till you're, like, 40. You can go 40 over, 40 and over. Wait, and then, like, all the fast guys have quit and moved on, and you can just yeah. come back and win then. Yeah, and then no one's got any, any expectation of you as well. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. What have you been doing? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I've been training for 10 years, but nothing. Because <laughs> that's what people say. They're like, oh, why don't you come out the track and have a ride? And I was like, Man, I don't want to go out and get beat by that 16, 17-year-old yeah. kid that have been training since, he, coaching since he was 12 yeah. years old. No, no, that's me now. Yeah. Get me ass yeah. kicked. It's love. It's awesome. I don't feel like getting beaten. Yeah, I know. I'd rather just uh, stay away from it. <laughs> I've gone a bit of full circle now. I was a bit like that when I first quit. Now I'm sort of just back and enjoying it and just riding. You know, yeah. I think I'm uh, past it. I have, I have no doubts I'll um, start riding again. But yeah. Uh, yeah, at the moment, just enjoying having a bit of a, bit of a break from the sport. Still coaching a lot. Yep. And I still ride, but I'm yeah, definitely not going to race anymore. So life after BMX. So what's going on? So I was talking to you a little bit before. You're, you're doing a bit of cross country stuff now. Yeah, like trail, trail mountain bike riding. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's fun, man. It's like a new challenge. It's still, it's still riding bikes, you know. Bit of endurance work. Yeah, to climb up the hills and then bomb down it. <laughs> Six kilos lighter. Yeah, that's right, man. It's tough, man. My fitness. The first one, the first ride I did, it took an hour and so to do ten k. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, now fitness has come up. I've never ever done any insurance before, so <laughs> it's coming up. Yeah, it's, that's really horrible, man. Yeah, it's, what it's um? Seeing too, man. Like, look, cool guys in that sport. So yep. Just ride the trails. Find someone on the trails and say, "What's going on?" Shoot shit with them, and then yep. Use the trail out with them. Do you ever do um dirt jumpy trails or just like just track trails? Yeah, I just don't want to get injured, man. Like, yep. One more crash, nothing. My body's gonna be <laughs> I try, I try and stay away from it until it's free nowadays. There's some dudes um, with some local trails around here that keep telling me to come down. Like, oh, come down, come down. And I'm just like, mate, there's nothing down there but pain for me. Yeah, that's right, man. Uh, Horrible. Yeah, my, my body doesn't cover like it used to. So. <laughs> I remember when you were racing, man, you had both wrists braced up. You had, you have, I don't even know, you had ankles braced up. You had knees braced up. Oh, man, it would take me 10 minutes to get up for a race. You know? Yep. But on um, wrist guards... Yep. Had, had it up to the 
and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just so I remember back in the day, we'd be 20 years old and like, screw that. <laughs> How'd you find, um, after BMX, like getting back into the workforce? How'd you find that? Getting back into working 40 hours a week and doing like real world stuff? Uh, it wasn't too bad, man, to be honest. Yep. I think because um, I came from that, you know, like I came from, from I was working full time for did my apprenticeship and worked as a tradesman for a year, so I was working full time for five years before I quit and raced full time. Yep. So I knew what to expect. I knew I, I knew the pros and cons of, you know, working nine to five and then being a, a pro could be a maxer as well. So yep. I think I prepared myself and I knew what I was stepping back into. And it, it was surprisingly easy, I yep. guess. Yeah, so it, it's good going back to a steady paycheck and going through the supermarket and running the Bible and whatever's on to <laughs> <laughs> So you're married now too, huh? Got married? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking about the day. I went to be in a pro BMX at a married and with a mortgage in a year and a half, right? So yeah, yeah. No kids yet? Little Kirkhams? No, no kids yet. But now I got married last year in uh, November. Went to Thailand. Yep. I was married on that. So that was, uh, that was really good. Yeah, nice. I bought a house as well, so. Yep. How funny is it going on trips and not actually waiting for a bike bag when you're at the airport? It's crazy, man. Because I always carried my helmet too. So yeah. you go through security, you get your backpack, and then you're walking up from security and like, I'm missing something, you know? <laughs> and then, then you rock up. It's even better when you don't have any check luggage. Yeah, yeah. Then you just walk straight out of the place, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, like, yeah, a lot more relaxing. How good is it? It's, it's, it's a funny, you know, the first few times I went on actual holidays without a bike, it was just like, this is awesome. <laughs> you definitely feel like yeah, you're trying to. Carry the bag, and then you know, like, oh, I'm gonna get a trolley, and then you get a trolley, and then you're trying to fit the bike through the doors and all sorts of shit. Like, and then, and then you're trying to get it in the rental car. What a pain in the ass. Bikes suck. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fun, man. Like, like the, the career I had, I mean, I had uh, probably the funnest years of my life. Yeah, definitely, uh, very grateful for what I've the opportunity I've had. Yep, I've done. Yeah, but now it's uh, time to go back to the real world, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Awesome. All right, mate. Well, hey, thanks for chatting. No worries, buddy. Beautiful. I thought, um, yeah, it'd be good to have a chat to you and just get your perspective on, on life after BMX and life during BMX. I thought it would be um, be interesting. It was good. Lovely, man. I've gone, uh, gone full circle, so it's uh, been pretty recent too. So. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good, man. I, uh, I'm still trying to keep up with all the BMX stuff and the results. And yeah. It's great. Definitely miss that. You never, it never, it never falls out of your, you know, never, you never um, detach completely. I think that's the word I'm looking for. No, man, BMX is like a magnet, man. When you think you're out, it just pulls you back in. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure you've been out of the sport plenty of times. Oh man, I can't Three get away. Again. I love it. Yeah, definitely. It's good fun. All right, mate. Thanks again, Brian Kirkham. You're a champion, and uh, mate, thanks for, uh, thanks for the chat, and, and um, yeah, hopefully we catch up soon. Definitely, buddy. Thanks, man. Have a good one. See ya.